Hi guys, how are you doing today? Hope you are having a sunny day. Ready for some new drama from Ask a Lawyer? Let's go to the first one, about OP's ex's daughter, who is furious OP doesn't pay for her student loans, despite being the reason why OP broke up with her ex. Listen to the story guys to find out all the details, and of course to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, don't forget to leave a comment. When I was in my late 20s, I began dating a divorced man with three kids. We took it extremely slow. I didn't meet them for a year and a half, and then we slowly spent more and more time together over the course of another year. After two and a half years together, we tried a soft move in, where I would begin spending the weekends there and moving my stuff over. Two of his daughters, at the time A, 8, and B, 10, warmed to me quickly, and I also got along with his ex-wife. However, his oldest daughter, C, 12, hated me and made it absolutely clear. She was always resistant to me when we were dating, but when I tried to move in, it got worse. She would refuse to eat if I cooked, scream at me if I spoke to her, loudly insult me, and beg her dad to break up with me while I was sitting next to him. She would refuse to participate in family activities if I came. She had already been in therapy for her parents' divorce, and her dad went with her, but it didn't get better. After a few months of this, I felt like I was ruining his family, and I broke things off. He was upset, but understood, and we parted on sad but good terms. I ended up meeting the love of my life a few months later, and we now have four children. I stayed in touch with both his two younger daughters through occasional meetups through their mom, email, and eventually social media. Later, C was diagnosed with a number of mental health issues, including bipolar too. I'm not sure why earlier therapists didn't catch this, but apparently after beginning treatment, medication, she has almost a different personality, according to her sisters. A few years ago, I began meeting up with B and A for lunch, dinner, every so often. B mentioned how stressed she was about paying for medical school, and it came out that she already had loans from undergrad. Her parents make too much money for her to get much aid, but not enough to help her with tuition. My husband and I do well financially, and we offered to pay off B's undergrad debt, plus medical school. I also paid off A's undergraduate loans and will pay for her master's program. Both girls are really grateful, and I'm so happy watching them thrive. I didn't tell them not to mention this to anyone, but asked them to be discreet. Both told their parents, sister, that they received scholarships from their university. Well, somehow C found out the truth and is now claiming that she is being punished for her mental illness, actions as a child. She is demanding her parents pay off her debts and pay for her graduate program. They can't afford to. This is causing a massive amount of tension in their family. C skipped Christmas with her dad and has cut off her sisters. Her dad emailed me thanking me for paying for his daughter's schooling, but saying he wishes I never did so in the first place. Their mom isn't angry, but wishes I had told her. I intended to be generous, but now feel like I stepped where I shouldn't have. Am I the a-hole? C literally cost OP a relationship OP was otherwise happy in, and OP was graceful about not putting her through that, and rather than acknowledging anything about this or apologizing, she instead went straight to thinking that someone she treated horribly owed her something. I know bipolar is hard, but it doesn't make people incapable of apologizing, and having bipolar doesn't mean everything you do is something you get to blame on that. She's not being punished for having bipolar disorder. She's being excluded because she refused to have a relationship with OP, destroyed her relationship with her dad, and refused to even apologize for her past behavior, and now she's got to lay in the bed she made. You reap what you sow, and now let's see if the community agrees with me. Throw away flat dilemma says, not the a-hole, as she's also an adult, C is way out of order and needs to seek more professional help to figure out her logic as to why she should be gifted the same as her two adult sisters by someone she has no relationship with. This is nothing to do with mental illness, and what you did for A and B is between you and them. It's none of their mom's, dad's, or sister's business. Vintage QR says, not the a-hole. C is still trying to justify their actions towards OP even years later. Mental illness doesn't excuse malice or malicious intents. She did whatever she could so that OP would leave the dad. They got what they wanted, and they deserve nothing more. I do agree you should have told the parents, but at the same time, a and B treated you with dignity and respect, while C was just plain rude. My, 27 female, husband, 36 male, 
and I love kids. We've always talked about having a big family, and now we have one. We have five kids, two biologically ours, four male, three male, and three that we adopted, six male, four male, and one female, and we couldn't be happier. Our kids are everything to us, and everyone knows it. But even knowing that, my family hates it that we have so many kids, because they think that we are exaggerating, that we shouldn't have more because kids are expensive, and we need to think about their future. We've explained to them multiple times that we are fine, and that fortunately, we can afford to have more kids, but they don't understand. Yesterday we told them that I'm pregnant. They got mad, and didn't even try to pretend they were happy. They just told us that we are crazy, and that we have to stop. My mom was the only one that was happy, because we told them we're expecting another girl. But the rest? The rest of my family told us a lot of things that we definitely didn't want to hear. My sister, 32 female, told me that she and her husband are struggling to raise one kid, two male, and that she cannot imagine how difficult it will be to raise six. That she cannot understand what I was thinking when I got pregnant. I told her that we are fine financially and that money is not a problem for us. Husband is a dentist and fortunately in our country, he earns a lot of money per month. And neither is love. That they will be fine and that we will love them all equally. But she just told me that I'm crazy for wanting to have so many kids. I told her that that's not her problem, and she just started saying that I have to grow up and put aside that dream of wanting to have so many children that I will not be able to save all the children in the world. And that was just what upset me the most, because she didn't have to say that. So I told her again that it's not her problem, but she didn't stop. So I told her that I was really sorry, but that it wasn't my problem if she and her husband can't afford to give their son a good life, that she has to stop projecting her life on mine. Then she started saying that I'm a horrible sister, and that it wasn't right to say that when I know that she's struggling financially, that she's doing everything possible to raise her son and give him a good life. And of course, now all my family defends her, and they accuse me of being a horrible person for saying what I said. But I tried not to say that, and I told her twice that it wasn't her problem. But she didn't stop, and I was tired, and that's why I told her. They're all the time saying the same things, as if they're the ones who pay everything for my kids. They don't, by the way, and I can't take it anymore. Am I the a-hole? Well, I would understand if OP would be struggling and would be complaining or asking for help from her relatives. Then people could comment. But at the moment, she is happy and her family is happy. So why is her sister not happy? Sounds like jealousy to me. In this case, I think it's nobody's business how many kids OP has. Do you agree with me, guys? But I think OP went too far saying that her sister can't give a good life for her son. I think good life is not about money, it's about love. If sister's son is loved and cared after, he's happy and no amount of money can buy that. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Dramatic Tell 6810 says, Not the a-hole. Keep reminding people not to project their financial issues onto you. They apparently don't understand that they're doing that. Margson says, Everyone sucks here them for commenting on what you and your husband choose to do with regard to your family. You for saying your sister can't give her son a good life because she isn't wealthy. Just a lot of parent shaming going on on both sides. Zom Woffer says, Have you considered that both of you are a-holes? Your family sure weren't nice to you. Big a-hole energy right there. You decided to take revenge and hurt your sister by indirectly telling her that she is a bad mother. Also big a-hole energy. I know she was projecting, but that doesn't make it right. Think of it like this. Would you laugh at someone less fortunate than you? I like to think you wouldn't, so you shouldn't hurt your sister. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind after all. If you call your sister and apologize, maybe the two of you can make up. I, 25 female, and my husband, 27 male, are expecting our first child. Just like all expecting parents, we're throwing around baby names. We recently found out it was a girl, and really like Kate. Here's where the problem comes in. We had a family dinner at my parents' house this past weekend, and my brothers, James 16, girlfriend Caitlin 15, joined us. My mom asked if we had decided on a name, and we told her we were thinking Kate. Caitlin spoke up and told us we couldn't do that, as it was too close to her name. I laughed, because she couldn't have been serious, but she was. She got mad at the laughing, and said, when James and I get married, I don't want to be Aunt Caitlin to a Kate. Some people even call me Kate. 
I told her that as much as we want high school relationships to work, sometimes they don't. And I get she doesn't like it, but I'm not going to judge the name of my baby on the what if of her marrying my brother. She then began to cry and say that we didn't accept her. My mom tried to defuse the situation saying that she was at our family dinner, so of course we do. But she then said that the only way she'd believe that is if I named my baby something else. I again refused, and my brother jumped in with, she's not even born yet, OP. Just pick a different name. I admit I did get a little mad and hormonal and tell them I'm not picking a six-month child relationship over the name of my kid. It's not going to last. My mom told me to leave the room because the girl was in hysterics. After she went home, my mom told me she knew where I was coming from, but Caitlin was just a teenager. My brother has also refused to talk to me since. I get that I got mad at a girl 10 years younger, but shouldn't I be able to name my kid what I want? My husband thinks maybe we should name her something else, but I still really love it. Am I the a-hole? She's delusional and has no rights to a name. OP is correct in the fact that her brother's relationship won't last. I just don't understand why OP had to leave the room. If anything, Caitlin should have been sent home for causing a scene over something trivial. OP's mom shouldn't excuse the fact she's a teenager either. Throwing a toddler tantrum over her not being the only Kate is very uncouth. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Sivako Taraniustu says, Not the a-hole. Caitlin doesn't own the name Kate, Caitlin, etc. She was way out of line telling a grown woman what she can and cannot name her daughter. Name your daughter what you like. It's unlikely this high school relationship will last. Linerva says, Not the a-hole. You have every right to name your child anything you like within reason. Caitlin is 15. She's a literal child. Odds are she won't be dating your brother in a month, let alone by the time he's old enough to call her aunt. It may have been harsh to hint out they won't last, but it's statistically accurate. Imagine being 15 and meeting your barely boyfriend's family and immediately lecturing them on what they can name their children. My son is going to an expensive school next year and I'm financially nervous about it. It's close to 16K a year after aid. All of a sudden, I'm worried about providing for my younger sons. I'm a single dad, now that I have his financial monkey on my back. A few weeks before my son graduated, his class had an assembly where they gave out scholarship money. The money was raised from foundations or groups like Rotary. My son won two awards totaling $10,000. The problem was that we thought that we were on the same page regarding the money. I said it was going to be used for school, and he agreed. What I meant was that it was going to be used to pay me back since I already paid for his school, and he meant that he would go to college with 10 k to spend as he sees fit. Of course, he's saying that it's his money, and I'm saying it's not. It's for college, and since I paid for it, it goes to pay me back. I would have factored that money into everything if I had known he was getting it. I told him I'm not ducking around, and all I have to do is tell the teacher who is in charge of distributing the money to send the check in my name. He will do it. Of course, I'd rather have my son see it my way before having to override him like he's 11. Edit. He did not earn squat. The teacher in charge of the money said it was more of a popularity contest and gave bragging rights to the school and donors to say they sent kids to UCSB. You can ride my TARDIS, says. You're the a-hole. You should have had a serious conversation with your son about this a long time ago. Also, you save this up for him to pay you back? Most parents save up a college fund for their kid for exactly that to get them through college. That's it. No expectations for their kids to pay them back. Sorry you had more kids than you planned for, but it's honestly kind of crappy of you to expect your child to do that. Shouldn't you just be happy that your kid made it to college, got those scholarships, and just support him instead of dogging him about money? Forsaken Knowledge 12 says, You're the a-hole. You also can't take claim to his scholarship money. If he's an adult, the money will be legally made out in his name. You can either restart a savings account and hope you're able to help out your boys, or they will have to rely on student aid and loans if they choose to go to college. Legally, you have no right to tell your son you now own his award money. He can take you to court and fight you for it. You'll have a huge issue on your hands, and most importantly, you're going to strain the relationship with your son. I can already tell you're not going to put that money aside for your other children. You clearly have a troublesome personality. Did you already spend it? Come find me quick, says. You're the a-hole. You quite obviously did it in a way you could say what you wanted. As his dad, you should be paying for his school, 
and that money is going towards more school that will help him potentially in the long run. I'm hoping that he does well, gets a great job, lots of money, and gives you duck all. I was on a three and a half hour flight from London to Athens as I was going to visit my family. Next to me on the plane, it was a mom with her around one year old baby. The baby was upset and crying almost the entire time. The mom was also in panic mode and would take the baby to the bathroom multiple times to calm him down. She kept apologizing for the disturbance to both passengers and the crew, and I felt bad for her. She seemed extremely young and overwhelmed. A lady that was sitting on the seats in front of us kind of scolded the mom of the baby and told her word for word, instead of being a crybaby like your kid, be better prepared next time, since none of us are in a mood to hear screeching noises for almost four hours. That, or leave your baby at home. The mom kept apologizing and said she couldn't leave her baby at home since she doesn't have anyone to care for her baby. The lady then said, then don't travel, it's not a necessity, you choose to travel. The mom tried to justify herself saying how it was a necessity for her to travel in this case and it's for a family matter. The lady kept going and told the mom, then find other ways to travel then, get a car and travel, or go on a train or bus. I had enough of this and I stood up for the mom. I asked the lady if she knows how much time it takes to travel from London to Athens in any other way, and that a train or a bus is as much of a public transport as the plane is. I told her to be compassionate. She told me, I don't have to be compassionate. I paid for my ducking seat and I want some peace and quiet. I told her to suck it up. She's in a public transport. If she wants peace and quiet, she should either book first class or a private jet next time. She shut up for the rest of the flight, but made sure to pass by the mom and the baby and give disapproving side eyes multiple times. I was describing this story to my friend, and she told me I was out of line for talking like that to that lady, and I should have minded my business. Not your circus, not your monkeys, is what she said, and said I purposely made myself an a-hole in this situation. OMG Pony says, not the a-hole, standing up for another human being, especially an overwhelmed mom, is a very good thing to do. And not having to listen to the mean lady for a couple of hours is totally worth it too. Brittany Green says, not the a-hole, someone who is clearly struggling and looks overwhelmed, is rarely able to stand up for themselves in an unexpected attack like that. That young mom sounds like she was hanging on by a thread. And I bet having someone else advocate for her made a big difference on how she felt on that flight and afterwards as well. You were compassionate. Too many people look away when someone else is being mistreated. Good for you for standing up to an obnoxious person who is not helping an already difficult situation. Loopy Landtide says, Not the a-hole. Being trapped in a tin can with a screeching child sucks. But the mom was trying to soothe the kid. I'm assuming the kid's ears hurt the whole flight because crying for three hours straight ain't normal. Pissed off passengers are achieving nothing other than making an already crappy situation worse.